Welcome to Design Center Ball, a market for Rosh, and today we are in Belfast, the capital of Northern Ireland. This beautiful city has had a more troublesome past. Let's look into it and perhaps learn a little bit of its past and look into its future. Belfast is located in the upper eastern corner of the island of Ireland. It is the capital of Northern Ireland with a population of over 600,000 people. Over one third of Northern Ireland's residents live within the metropolitan area. Belfast's name derives from the old Irish Bill Firste, or River's Mouth, as it resides on the confluence of the rivers Logan and Farset. The site of modern day Belfast has been populated for over 5,000 years. A hinge, much smaller than this Stonehenge, but of similar construction, is located not far from the city center. It is known as the Giant's Ring. There are remains of Iron Age castles around the area, and two castles, Belfast Castle and Carrick Fergus Castle, date back to the 13th and 12th centuries, respectively. Known as a plantation town prior to the Industrial Revolution, Belfast was primarily Anglican and began to experience religious turmoil that foreshadowed greater conflict coming in the 20th century. After the successful revolutions of the United States and France in the late 18th century, Belfast attempted to declare its independence from the United Kingdom, but was defeated in the Battle of Antrim in 1798. With the coming of the Industrial Revolution, Belfast became an important factory town within the British Empire. Landless Catholics moved to Belfast in droves for employment opportunities. The city experienced a rapid expansion during the 19th century and after the secession of the Irish Free Estate in 1921, Belfast was named the capital of Northern Ireland which remained under the control of Great Britain along with five other counties. By the 1920s, Belfast was considered the foremost city in the world for ship construction. The largest, grandest, and fastest ocean liners were built at the Harland and Wolf shipyards, including the infamous RMS Titanic, which left an indelible mark on the city's history. We will discuss that later in the show. Belfast saw major bombing by the Nazis in World War II, second only to London. The Belfast Blitz, as it came to be known, killed over 1,000 people and left 10,000 homeless. Whereas most European cities saw major economic revitalization and prosperity at the end of World War II, Belfast quickly fell into a state of civil war. Known as the Troubles, a decades-long conflict between Protestant and Catholic residents led to thousands of deaths, massive destruction, and the declaration of Belfast as one of the most dangerous cities in the world from 1969 until 1998. The Europa Hotel in Belfast was attacked 36 times during the Troubles and came to be known as the most bombed hotel in the world. With a ceasefire in 1994 and a final peace deal in 1998, the internal conflict in Belfast subsided and the city prepared to enter the 21st century. Today, Belfast is a thriving city of over 600,000 with new developments, including the Titanic Quarter, which pays homage to the city's maritime history along with other districts. When we come back, we will learn more about Belfast's rich history and its incredible architecture. Today we are with Jess, the owner and creative director of Just LED at the Santa Barbara Design Center and his marvel of lighting. So, I understand there is a new 
recessed lighting that replaces the old clunky big ones is more ergodynamic and you carry this. Can you explain to our viewers what this is all about and what kind of benefits they get out of it? Yes, Michael. Traditionally, six inch and four inch has been the standard across America. The big clunky trims on the ceiling, you'll see them all over America. Since LED has come to another level on recessed fixtures and as a designer, we like to see tight little go away trims that you don't see, they're up in the ceiling. So we have trims that are 3.5 inches that go, the light sits up in the ceiling so when you walk in it doesn't hit you in the face like the six and four inch traditional cans used to do. They also dim warm, so it's like the old traditional dimming, everyone loves LED dimming to the way halogens used to, it's called warm dim. So they dim down nice and warmly. So and it's all sat above the ceiling and it's all optical sending shafts of light through the room, creating a great mood in the room. Well, that's very nice, and I have seen it actually in your showroom. Come down here and see what he has to offer and make your house beautiful and warm. Thank you very much. No problem. One of the names most closely associated with Belfast is Titanic. Conceived as the largest ocean liner in the world by Thomas Andrews and J. Bruce Ismay of the White Star Line, Titanic and her sister ships Olympic and Britannic were built at Harland and Wolf shipyards in Belfast. Opened in 1861, H&W shipyards quickly became the pride and joy of Belfast. The city's largest employer and driving force of its economy, this yard created some of the most iconic vessels in modern history. Between 1909 and 1912, work at the yards were focused on the construction of the largest vessel in history, to be known as Titanic. In order to build such a massive ship, the yards had to be reconstructed to accommodate gigantic scaffolds, cranes, and a slipway for when it was time to enter the water. Over the course of 26 months, thousands of steel sheets were riveted into a hole of massive proportion. The largest anchor ever built was forged for Titanic and once completed, it took 20 Clydesdale's horses to transport it. In total, 15,000 workers took part in the building of Titanic at Harlan and Wolf. There were six fatalities in process and around 250 major injuries. On May 31st, 1911, Titanic was released into the River Lagan. It took 20 tons of soap spread across the slipway to get her to move into the water. After final detailing and sea trials, Titanic was launched on April 10th, 1912 to Great Fanfare. The world's wealthiest individuals purchased tickets for the luxury journey from Southampton, England to New York City. Over 2,200 people, including many proud Belfast workers who took assignments on the ship they built, were on board the Titanic for her maiden voyage when unthinkable happened. In the late hours of April 14, 1912, Titanic collided with an iceberg in North Atlantic Ocean. Despite being heralded as unsinkable due to her watertight compartment design, the damage proved to be too great and she began to founder. With not enough lifeboats for the entire complement of passengers and crew, over 1,500 men, women and children lost their lives, including many residents of Belfast. Word of the tragic sinking reached Belfast on April 16th. Thousands of people stood outside the Belfast Telegraph newspaper office to hear the slow trickle of survivors' names come in. In all, 22 people of Belfast who worked on Titanic, including her designer Thomas Andrews, perished in the sinking. Eight passengers with connections to the area were also lost. The city was left in a state of shock at what happened to its pride and joy. Within days of sinking, a memorial was proposed and approved by the city government. Its construction was slowed by the outbreak of World War I in 1914, but in June of 1920, the memorial was formally dedicated. 
To commemorate the 100th anniversary of the sinking, a greater Titanic Memorial Garden was constructed around the monument and dedicated in 2012. When we come back, we will explore the architecture and design of Belfast. Stay tuned. There is more Design Santa Barbara after the break. The architectural style of Belfast's buildings range from Edwardian, like the City Hall, to modern, like Waterfront Hall. Many of the city's Victorian landmarks, including the main Lanyon Building at Queen's University Belfast and the Linen Hall Library, were designed by Sir Charles Lanyon. The City Hall was finished in 1906 and was built to reflect Belfast's city status granted by Queen Victoria in 1888. The Edwardian architectural style of Belfast City Hall influenced the Victoria Memorial in Calcutta, India, and Durban City Hall in South Africa. The dome is 173 feet high and figures above the door state, Hibernia encouraging and promoting the commerce and art of the city. Among the city's grandest buildings are two former banks. Ulster Bank in Waring Street, built in 1860, and Northern Bank in nearby Donegal Street, built in 1769. The Royal Courts of Justice in Chichester Street are home to Northern Ireland's Supreme Court. Windsor House, 262 feet high, has 23 floors and is the second tallest building in Ireland. Work has started on the taller Obel Tower which already surpasses the height of Windsor House in its unfinished state. The ornately decorated Crown Liquor Saloon designed by Joseph Anderson in 1876 in Great Victoria Street is one of the only two pubs in the UK that are owned by the National Trust. It was made internationally famous as the setting for the classic film Odd Men Out starring James Mason. The restaurant panels in the Crown Bar were originally made for Britannic, the sister ship of the Titanic built in Belfast. The Harland and Wolf shipyards has two of the largest dry docks in Europe, where the giant cranes Samson and Goliath stand out against Belfast's skyline. Including the Waterfront Hall and the Odyssey Arena, Belfast has several other venues for performing arts. The architecture of the Grand Opera House has an oriental theme and was completed in 1895. It was bombed several times during the Troubles, but has now been restored to its former glory. The Lyric Theatre, the only full-time producing theatre in the country, is where film star Liam Neeson began his career. The Ulster Hall was originally designed for grand dances, but is now used primarily as a concert and a sporting venue. These are only a hint of the incredible architecture and design of this amazing city. I hope you get a chance to experience it yourself someday. Thank you for watching Design Santa Barbara, and we hope you will join us next week for another episode.